What is happening, everybody? I have to say, for a guy who doesn't have a job operating equipment, I sure do operate a lot of equipment, don't I? I got another surprise pop-up job. Uh, my buddy, the farmer, the one that I've been putting the millions down in his parking lot, uh, called me last night, and they need someone to fill in as a hoe and dozer operator for a couple days. So here I am with this lovely Cat 330 here. We're gonna, we're gonna help these guys out with their tiling job and uh, we're backfilling some giant holes they've made. So what happened is this field had a fair amount of deep cuts in it. Uh, their, their plow will go comfortably about five or six feet before he really starts to bog the machine. And he's at a max reach on his boot. So they had to make a couple runs that were closer to 10 or 11 foot deep, maybe even 12, judging by the hole. So we're gonna walk over here and I'll show you. So what they did is they took the 330 cut a big old trench the width of the machine sorry I'll, I'll quit shaking you here in just a second let me get down here so so the camera will adjust and you can actually see and appreciate that's easily an eight foot cut at its deepest point if you can't hear me let me say that again that's easily an eight foot cut at its deepest point so what they did is they cut the width of the plow and then they ran the plow down the trench and put their line in and backfilled. And that's what I'm here to do is backfill. So all of that dirt has got to go in that big hole. I've got a D5 to follow with, so my goal today is to hog everything in with the hoe. Uh, the dozer actually, well, let's see here. I'm gonna think about this. So you guys saw the video where I had an issue with Melissa when she was out running with me where I couldn't get that dozer started. Uh, come to find out it had a fuel leak on one of the fuel lines and it lost prime so it wasn't that it was just cold it physically didn't have any fuel getting to the engine we figured that out so they've got a part coming for the d5 so until the d5 is up and operational i'm hogging with this machine throwing stuff in the hole and then when the d5 gets fixed i'll come spruce everything up and then actually push the topsoil over top so that's what we're going to do we've got this pile here there's another one way over there and there's another one way over there. I don't know if you can see that or not. Well, we've got three areas. It's easily gonna take us all day, if not two days to knock this out. So we'll see what happens. So that being said, this is the way I always end these little intro videos. I'll catch you in a minute in the machine. And that's that, see you in a minute. We're getting ready to bench ourselves up onto this pile and then I'm just going to start bailing over the edge is my plan. We're in a real man's hole today. No more mid-size CX-80. It's nice to get into another good size machine. that apply to the little machines apply to the big machines too they just move slower and they do a lot more damage when you run into things other than that it's pretty much the same so the, the 
other thing I'll tell you on these bigger machines you do want to worry about is your counterweight rubbing because it does overhang the tracks. Unlike that CX-80, you didn't really have to worry about it. The CX-80 counterweight was pretty well inside the track base. But uh, with these big machines, you do have to worry about your counterweight rubbing and you do want to pay attention to that. That's part of, uh, that's part of taking care of the equipment. Part of being a good operator versus a mediocre operator. Sweat. You can see how much slower this machine is running this morning when it's cold. And it's going to be like this for probably 15 or 20 minutes. Maybe not quite that long. I bet all of 10 or 15 minutes though. And it's just because the hydraulic tank is so freaking big on these machines. They move slow to begin with anyway, but especially when the hydraulics are cold. This is just such a big hydraulic system to try to get, get cooled down, or warmed up, sorry. Trying to dig and make a video at the same time, not always successful. They do want that nutrient dense soil to stay up top. Uh, I'm not going to be 100% successful just because some of this stuff is pretty sticky and it is taking some of the top soil with it, but that's what I'm at least trying to do. In this window for you and me both. There we go. I cranked my air back up a little bit to compensate. But at least now we can see. I'm going to keep 
up with this whole thing so I'm not bouncing off and on the pile.
earlier, I'm gonna bulk all this material into the hole and then I'm gonna jump on the dozer and really worry about grading. That's all I wanna use the dozer for is for the grade work because this is so much faster being able to fling this much material the distance I can. So anyway, I did wanna tell you guys in an excavator, believe it or not, there is a built-in bathroom if you're not aware of this. And there is both a men's room and a ladies room. So if you bring your bucket all the way in, up against the machine like so. Uh, the men's room, you can just tuck yourself right in there and that's no big deal. You can just pee right in your bucket. No one can see anything. And then when you're ready to rock, you just uh, dump it right out. But the ladies room, you have to do a little bit more. So you need a, a depression of some sort so that you can get in and out. And there you have a nice ladies room where you can uh, just squat right down in there. So. You don't learn something on this channel. You guys have all walked away with a new nugget of knowledge. You're welcome, everyone. chased it all the way out there and uh, what I did was fold the dirt back in over top of the trench that the plow had made and then tracked it in with the dozer. Uh, I'm going to track it in with the hoe as well and then when I go back with the dozer I'll just skim the top of it and kind of let that dirt level itself down and then once they go over it with the discs a couple times or the cultivator um, it ought to be pretty Efficiency of 
productivity in these excavators because the bigger you go, yeah, they move a lot more material, but they also move a lot slower, so you've got to make those movements count.
topsoil here, it ain't gonna make a big difference. see here way let me pull the microphone where you can hear me too so way back over here is where we started this morning with that huge fill uh, that all I've done is graded off smooth with the dozer so that we can go over there and track it in uh, this is the area where we were working earlier today and while it looks like the moon right now I can doze this out here in about 15 minutes and this will look nice and smooth and not that big of a deal right now what I'm currently doing is I just wrapped up let's see here back over here uh, that was where we had one side was fill material and then the piles that you see left over are topsoil so I've got all of the fill put back into the hole so tomorrow the first thing I'm gonna do is go grade that out with the dozer make it flat and then I will bale all of the topsoil on top with this machine and we'll smooth that over. So that will be buttoned up pretty quick. Uh, now what I'm doing is I'm going around to all of the windrows that I made with the dozer. Uh, this is where the tile actually went in. This was where the plow was. Uh, what I did is I took my dozer blade and angled it and just cut everything back in and made it a, uh, a berm over top of the drain tile. 
now what I'm doing is taking this machine because it's significantly heavier than the dozer uh, I'm just taking this machine and we're just tracking the whole thing in so it's not the most exciting work but that's the only thing I have that's heavy enough to really compact this good so that he doesn't have settling issues over the course of the winter uh, I still think he's gonna have to do a little regrade maybe in the spring he might get away with just going over it with a cultivator a couple times and smoothing it out but we're gonna at least try to mitigate as many settling issues as we can so so that's it for me I'm gonna call it a night we're shutting down here in about another 15 minutes and we'll catch you guys tomorrow for day two of playing in the 330 so you guys have a good night we'll catch you tomorrow all right guys I know I already signed off but I had to show you this you want to know why I like this industry that's it right there look at that sunset look at that sunset it's beautiful I'm gonna try to get an Instagram photo that'll sort of do that justice never does but I'll try so anyway that's all I got if you got if you don't have any other reason that you want to get into this industry that right there you get sunrises and sunsets like that all the time get into the industry you'll love it we'll see you later